they will respond by saying i'm stressed even though it's not stress it might be anger it might be anxiety it might be depression so they don't know how to label their emotions young people's mental health during covid-19 in south africa Tim Schoot Eiterkamp, you are working at Free Press Unlimited and you coordinated a project between UNICEF and Free Press Unlimited uh, on the effects of mental health during COVID-19 uh, around the world, including in South Africa. Could you tell us a little bit more about what the project entailed? Yeah, absolutely. So this was uh, part of a larger uh, program that overall was held in uh, 12 different countries and Free Press Unlimited was um, involved in this project in, in four of these. Um, other countries, um, other partners of the program participated, such as, for instance, the Children's Radio Foundation, uh, which, who focused more on radio, whereas we focused more on video. And South Africa was actually the, the one country in which both of these uh, organizations, us and Children's Radio Foundation, were active. So that was very interesting. With this research, we really wanted to well, do three things. It's really a multi-layered thing, actually. Of course, we very importantly want to understand the situation of mental health of young people, uh, especially in the context of COVID. Mm. So that was the most immediate thing that we wanted to learn uh, from this program. Uh, what are um, inhibitors for seeking help? What are taboos? What are things that young people are doing themselves mm. to uh, improve the situation? At the same time, we... Um, uh, approach this uh, in a participatory way. So by having young people uh, lead the uh, study themselves and make uh, make videos about their own experiences and perspectives. And so we also wanted to learn from that whether that more participatory approach um, yielded uh, interesting results. Yeah. And then thirdly, of course, um, as Free Press Limited, as a media organization, we were very interested in using uh, video as a platform to uh, empower the young people speaking on those videos and have their perspective heard by a greater amount of people. Right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we're also joined here online by Naledi Mogautzi. Um, Naledi, hi. Uh, you were part of this project, uh, you were part of uh, producing or co-producing the uh, uh, interviews with 15 uh, dozen young people. Um, what what was part of the research that stood out to you the most? And uh, yeah, is there a story that really touched you? Uh, the overall part that stood out for me was actually coming to that realization that uh, young people are the ones that are mostly suffering from these things because it's not something we usually talk about or entertain or even consider as a factor. So that's the one thing that actually stood out because that was like a, a cry for help from them when they were talking to me. You could hear the pain in their voices. You could hear that uh, they actually really need that help that they don't get anywhere else but from their friends or maybe people they regard as close. Let's have a look at a uh, part of a video that was made as part of this project. I never thought that my family and I would be like affected by the coronavirus because I know coronavirus, I never thought that it was something real. I never thought it would see uh, it kills people or whatsoever. So I didn't even put on myself to think, okay, my family will finally be affected about this coronavirus thing. Corona commit suicide, okay, so why should I live? So why should I live? Because when I want to talk about this, we say, no, mama, I want to do this. People weren't willing to listen to me. But when I started cutting myself, that's when they believed, okay, man, I'm in pain and I need help. I got support from my sister, okay, she was there for me, she would give me advices, because mostly I wanted to talk, so forever when like, okay, when I want to talk to people, I'd be thinking, okay, they don't want to listen, so how about I just put how I feel on Facebook, no, on WhatsApp status. So there was one, one time I posted on my statuses, and then my sister asked me to what's wrong, and then I like told, I told him, her, sorry, with what's wrong and whatsoever. But my mom would view my status, but still, he wouldn't even bother 
to ask me to what's wrong. So that's when I got support from my sister. Okay, to know, don't do this, do that. Do this, do that. Scream if you want to scream. Do whatever. And then maybe your pain will just fade away. Well, I haven't spoken to any professional person. Yeah, but I've spoken to my sister because she was forever there for me. My way forward is uh, being open to people. Maybe, okay, talk to people who find a be there for me, who find I listen to what I have to say to them, who find I ask which what's wrong, you know. Because sometimes I wake up in the morning and then put a smile on my face like nothing's wrong. But still, there's something wrong. There's something bothering me inside. So like a person who'd be there, I just need a person who'd like just ask if I'm okay, even though I'm smiling, you know. So, yeah. Sure, okay. Um, what stood out to me in this video is uh, definitely social media and the way that that plays a role, but also the space that you offered. Um, she talks about cutting herself and uh, and yeah, the, talking to people as a way to deal with it. What is your response to this video? When I saw it, when the whole thing was done, it was I was in shock, and it it just highlighted how much uh, young people are taught to neglect their emotions and not actually deal with the issue at hand, because they are often ignored in their homes. Mm -hmm because they are considered as young and parents often have this uh, thing of saying, you're young, so what could be possibly bothering you? You are ungrateful, things like that. So I feel like it just highlighted um, the real issue here, which is our background and how they contribute to how we deal with such matters. And so in her case, that has led to her just uh, being worse because she needed support and didn't get it. And she opted to do things that she felt were the solution at the moment, cutting herself. Because we don't know what people that have mental health issues are often thinking when they cut themselves. Right. Maybe it's just a reaction from them because uh, they are already feeling abandoned so they feel that there's no meaning to life anymore be because of that so yeah it's like the interviewee says like uh, she yeah uh, there's something wrong there's something wrong and she keeps repeating that why, why do you think t tell us a little bit about the narrative in south africa around mental health the taboo the fear of judgment and how yeah what is behind that? Well, in South Africa, because it's a very, um, I don't I could say traditional mm. background country because there's different tribes and all of that. So we grow up with the, uh, let me just say, uh, there's things that are instilled in us from a young age that could relate to our cultures or religions and things like that. So because of that, we grow up with these behaviors that are a norm to us. So when there's things like mental health, we don't know what that is. We, we often ridicule people that will come and say, oh, there's this thing called mental health, it has this. And we, we, they often say that uh, it's, it's Europeans' uh, problems or I don't know what modern problems they didn't have that so i could say that it's something that is ignored it's ignored as much as people would say that there are parts of um, south africa or the world that entertain mental health and advocate towards it uh, the reality is in the suicidal rates that have increased it's in the social issues that young people face and how they react to them so it's something that is not dealt with. There's a very bad taboo surrounding it. There's misconceptions, there's miseducation. So it's a whole load of confusion for people because even when they know that there is such things as mental health issues, they do not know what it is or how it affects them. Affects them. Because you see this through, when you ask somebody, what are you feeling or how are you and you notice that they're not okay what they label their emotions uh 
as is like they'll respond by saying i'm stressed even though it's not stress it might be anger it might be anxiety it might be depression so they don't know how to label their emotions even so in a broader aspect i would say that they they have a lot of learning to do because they don't understand their emotions and that's the bigger problem because now they start misdiagnosing themselves because they realize like, i'm stressed and then stress is just a symptom of depression it hasn't escalated how are youth then currently dealing with it i mean you just mentioned social media with as something how what are other ways like the girl in the video talked about her sister being a support the other people you met what do they do oh other people i've met most of them <laughs> mentioned social media wow. but besides social media they did mention uh, that they seek that kind of support from their peers but now the issue with that is that what like uh, when they seek support from their peers that are struggling with the same mental health issues as them the solution is not often a, a good one because they then uh, succumb to the pressures of uh, doing drugs or partying a lot or alcohol abuse so it often leads to other social factors that do not necessarily help them um others mentioned that they they depend on themselves for being better people or taking care of their mental health issues because they mentioned that they have activities that help them um with dealing with their emotions or they write down their emotions they listen to music or just do what they love do yoga some of them are educated on the topic and know exactly what to do to seek help because there's um, a guy that mentioned that he 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 often when he's feeling something he often sits down and starts labeling what 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 caused that emotion and why does he feel that emotion and how he can move forward from that so there's people that are knowledgeable on that there's people that know how to help themselves and then there's those that completely don't know what to do if you had to give one example of the the uh, a way of seeking support that really stood out to you what would it be that that you thought wow this person what they're doing i guess the example you just gave is impressive to me but for you was there one that stood out um there's this 16 year old girl that said something very uh as old as i am i was like oh i've never heard that before so i i learned something from her she said that um because she's a very naturally confident person she doesn't uh let um outside factors contribute to her emotions or her overall mental health so she 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 says that she's able to categorize things and where to put them and if it's an external thing then she doesn't let it come into her space and affect her so i could say she's uh, yeah that's what stood out for me because people don't often do that because some situations are just inherently there and they affect us but she chooses the fact that she ch she chose to do old. what is good for her and not care about what society says or what other things are the, the the power is within her not without like not external that's really impressive for a 16 year old my Absolutely. god yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that she was able to share that with you and you're able to transmit that. Because, uh, yeah, that's true. Putting it into words is maybe yeah. the most impressive part of it all. Yeah, it's it's easy to know something, but harder sometimes to, to share, right? Um, yeah. Because, exactly, and, and this leads to my question for you now. <laughs> uh, boom. You're, you're part of Free Press Unlimited, media mm -hmm. development organization. Um, how how does media play a role and act as a as a yeah as a tool for uh, an agency for change for young people who are struggling with with mental health? And I think it's very important to um, realize that the influence of 
what we see in in the pu in the public sphere in media content um, can represent sort of dominant uh, groups in society, dominant ways right. of thinking. Yeah. Uh, but that if media is to be an agent of change, then it needs to. Uh, represent the full diversity of society, including the experiences and the viewpoints of people who might be a bit underrepresented still, such as in almost every society, the experience and viewpoints of uh, young people. So showing their yeah. story on video and having them uh, have influence over how their story uh, is is told and their, uh, their interpretation of that as well is um, a form of empowerment and hopefully also something that encourages further discussion in society. It sounds like this is a, a stellar example. <laughs> uh, mental health in South Africa for young people is not getting the attention. And through this project, um, there has some light has been shone on it. Do you agree? Yes, definitely. Yeah, it's um, it would be good the more people um, see this, the more continue to talk about it yeah. and the more young people themselves hopefully also realize that they're not the only one dealing with those kind of feelings yeah because uh naledi this is my final question to you an important one what what message would you give bring to people young people in south africa struggling with mental health at this moment in time well um that's a very difficult one <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i think uh, i would just uh encourage them to uh, learn to learn or to lose themselves along the way because that is the greatest loss because after that it's hard to recover what do you mean by lose yourself um well losing a sense of self-identity and finding it hard to find your to find yourself in this world because I have gone through that. So I'm saying that because I know. So I would just encourage them to just um, know when to go and seek help, when they feel like everything is just weighing on their shoulders. Whatever help, whatever thing that they consider as seeking help, they should do it. And that would probably lead them to the right people, even though it's not a professional. There's people that offer an ear. There's people that have knowledge. I think I would just um, say to young people that they are also not alone. There's a lot of people going through the same thing that they're going through. And that should uh, be a form of light to them that there's other people like them and that they can overcome it with uh, it can be the littlest things you can overcome it by just waking up if you're struggling to wake up because you have depression choose that one day to just wake up that's an achievement because that's something you struggle with doing and when you finally can do it then that should be an encouragement that yeah I can do this I'm waking up every day I'm still living through it all regardless of what's happening these are important and wise words thank you so much Naledi for joining us today and thank you Tim as well uh, this is Studio Free Press Matters. See you next time. Should I say something now? Or I'm just going to continue saying things that don't make sense. <laughs> okay. No, no, don't speak. <laughs>